are starting the radio show now. The agents of mayhem have returned. <laughs> As we start with Beyond Midnight. The 40th birthday. These episodes all aired, well, all over the place. Uh, I think mostly in Britain, though. But the... Uh, I'm sorry, these were all in South Africa. These are suspense and a touch of horror. Let's check it out. The 40th birthday. <sighs> Another day. 17 left. 17 short, swift days. And you'll be 40, Robert Holmes. 40 years old. Yes? Oh, uh, leave it there, please. No, 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 on the table there. Thank you. Forty. Forty years old. Generally, it is the so-called frailer or weaker sex who are so conscious of the passage of time that they hear the knell of doom in the number 40. Generally speaking, that is, to Robert Holmes, though, 40 held all the terrors that modern man can imagine within its two crisp syllables. 40. 17 days short. Oddly, with each succeeding year, the age gap between him and El was seemed to widen, as if time were carrying him along and leaving her behind. In the beginning, she had looked at him as being attractively mature, while now he felt she regarded him as growing old. It was no trick of the imagination, the way he saw Elwaz looking at the younger men in the club, and a number of them, young bucks like Edward Mathis, were not above doing something about it. Poor Robert. He should have done something about it himself. Instead, he allowed it to prey on his mind, and that pathetic little number, the one that comes after 39, carried him beyond midnight. Biotech, the new soak and pre-wash powder presents Beyond Midnight by Michael McKay. I had a letter recently from Mrs. V.P. Head of 7th Street Parkmore to Hannesburg, and she said, I cannot fully describe my utter delight on returning to the washing to find the stubborn stains of two months standing completely removed. I am so glad I discovered your product, Biotex. And now Mrs. Jane Longman of Cambridge, West East London, wrote to say, just a word of thanks for your new soak and wash powder, Biotex. I find it almost too good to be true. I've just finished my first packet... And I washed all my baby's woolens with it, and they really do stay white. And what is more, they keep their shape so well, too. Once again, thanks for a wonderful product. I'm just hoping you won't wait too long before putting a large economy-sized packet on the market. Well, thank you, Mrs. Head of Parkmore and uh, Mrs. Longman, for your endorsements. I, too, can endorse Biotex by making certain claims to you, ladies. The most important of which is that with Biotex, the stubbornest... The very stubbornest stains just vanish merely by soaking. I'll get it, darling. Hello. Oh, hello, Bill. Look, I've been dying to hear what you both happened the other day. Mm. <sighs> Here. Looks 23. Got beauty. Youth. Money, too. <clears throat> Always gregarious. Thought she'd become a bit calmer, though, to marriage. She did, I suppose, but only for a year or two. Then I didn't look old. Hair hadn't even begun to recede. Grey. Falling out. Talk about 
arrêté. felt his security imperiled. In fact, he had completely, by this time, convinced himself that the only answer to his problem lay in his wife's death. Oh, dear. That Beryl, she is the limit, she really is. Beryl? Oh, you know Beryl? No, I don't know Oh, Beryl. of course you do, darling. Beryl Krimmer. Mm. She got married last spring to that tennis player, John something or other. John. You were all terribly surprised. He's at least seven years younger than she is. <coughs> Mavis thinks he's the most beautiful man she's ever known. I've never seen hair so fair, and he's got so much of it. Yes, he was, had youth, vitality, and longevity. It was a family trait. This combination virtually eliminated all chance for a natural death. Thus, Robert Holmes found himself with a sole possibility. In order for El Waz to die, he would have to kill her himself. Oh boy. This guy needs, uh, needs some help, huh? What do you think? Uh, there we are, Mr. Holmes. One dry martini. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you and your martini, Mr. Holmes. Insecurity, so going to get rid of I always thought it was only Americans who drank them. <laughs> Give me a nice pint any day of the week. Dry? <laughs> As the desert breeze. You've never been to America, have you, Mr. Holmes? No, no. <clears throat> no, I've never been to America. Uh, they say it's a wonderful country. That's a nice cigarette case, Mr. Holmes. Hmm? Yes, so wife gave it to me for my 30... for my birthday. Yes. You live out at Huntington, don't you, Mr. Holmes? Mm. Yes, that's right. 134, on the hill. That's a nice house, I know it. It's got a tennis court, garage for four cars. It's big. Mm. I used to work for the bloke who owned it during the war. Jack Conyers owned it then. He was a bootlegger. A what? <laughs> that's what they call him in the States, Mr. Holmes. Distillers of and runners of black market liquor. Oh, no. During the war, the customers telephoned for orders and we'd get the stuff out of the stockroom under the garage and send it out to them mm. at black market prices. Uh, police were never able to well, find under it. the garage? <laughs> but there's, there's no room under the garage. Well, it's probably been filled in a long time ago, but there used to be one under there. There was a trap door in the garage floor and some steps leading down. Mm. The door was on a spring and you had to push it in a certain place to make the trap open. Oh, yes. Oh, excuse me. Got to go as customers. Hello, Bobby boy. Oh, How are you? <laughs> oh, Charlie, are you celebrating? Well, wife's gone away. Visiting her sister. <laughs> First time the old... <clears throat> First time she's left me for 15 years. <laughs> oh, look. I might be telling tales out of school and all that, but I just saw your charming bride. Well? Well, I mean, maybe I ought to keep my big mouth shut. Well, right. come on, come on, you old drunkard, up with it. Well, I, I've been around the town to a few pubs today. And... That I can see. Mm. Well, I, I was in the domino earlier on, and that's where I saw her once. She was with a youngster called Mathis. Mathis? Edward Mathis? Yes, Edward. That's the one, Edward. <laughs> You're sure? Well, look, Bob, I've, I've had a few drinks, but there's nothing wrong with my eyesight. Oh, he's a smart one, that Mathis. is. <laughs> yeah, that is smart. <laughs> Birthday, Bob. It's only a couple of weeks off, you know. You'll be 40. You don't have to remind me. Hmm? What? Or would you like to get a crowd together and go to the club? Um, I'm not particularly looking forward to this birthday, if you don't mind. Why? Because you'll be 40. <laughs> oh, don't be absurd. You know what they say life begins at 40. Oh, for heaven's sake, spare me the cliche. I don't act so blasted smug. One of these days, you too are going to be 40. Of course, he's a long, long way off for me yet. 
Oh, still, it's nothing to be afraid of. He glanced down the long table at his wife. She had a secret of that he was sure. Nine years they'd been married now, nine years on her money. Even his job in her father's brokerage firm would go down the drain if anything happened to their marriage. Is anything wrong, Bob? What did you do today? Oh, nothing important. Went to the club, played nine holes and... With whom did you play? What is this, Robert? An inquisition? But just what is this all of a sudden? You're acting like a suspicious, peevish old man. Oh, forget it. I've had a bad day at the office. Forget it. She's a beauty, isn't she? Lovely yellow. Oh, oh hello. Uh, yeah, one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh, mamma mia. Uh, would, you, uh, would you ask Mathis if he's not too busy? I'd, I'd like to see him, please. Oh, Ed won't be in again until this afternoon. Uh, shall I ask him? No, no, no. Never mind. I'll, uh, I'll come back again some other time. Blazers with work today. That's what Holmes thought that morning. He drove home again. Her car was not in the garage. He moved moodily about the house for a while, drank two drinks, and then suddenly remembered what the barman had said about the old trap door in the cellar of his house. With a strange excitement, he went to investigate. Something had clicked in his mind. flashlight and climbing through the trap made his way down a flight of stone steps into what the room under the floor was large approximately the size of the garage itself the mold encrusted ceiling was formed of steel i-beams surmounted by the concrete garage floor the four walls were concrete too the floor was hard packed to earth the air was close and fetid A few details here and there, and, and my future is secure.
Johnson's Rally, the new car wax with the detergent proof formula, won't wash off. It's detergent resistant. Rally gives sure wax protection that's deep and long lasting. And the finish is fast, very fast. Johnson's Rally car wax in liquid or paste form. Soak, soak, that's all you have to do. Soak, soak, just for an hour or two you find. It's the best for this new when you use new biotechs. Amazing new biotech soaks, toughens, stains away. Clean, clean, everything soon will be clean, clean, for all the world to see. Soak, soak, stains away easily when you use new biotechs. Get amazing new biotechs today and let soaking do the washing. On a Thursday, a week and two days before his 40th birthday, Robert Holmes decided not to go to work. He told his wife he had some paperwork to wade through and accordingly he shut himself into his study and waited. An observer hidden with him in that room, though, would have observed that the gentleman in question opened no books, picked up no pens. Instead, he merely waited and listened close by the door. After a while, he heard Elwaz go to the telephone, make a call, and agree with one of her women friends to play golf that day. She replaced the phone, just as Robert stepped out into the hall. Oh, hello, darling. Finished already? No, just uh, taking a breather. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate to make you jealous, but... What's that? Hmm? Well, what's that on your neck? Neck? Just... Robert did a very workmanlike job of throttling Elwaz. As soon as he had finished, he carried her down to the room under the garage and buried her in the shallow grave he had dug the day before. By the time he carried this out, washed his hands and straightened his tie, barely five minutes had passed. In another 15 minutes, he was sitting at his desk at his office in town. Came 4.30 that afternoon, Miss Cook, I've, I've got a bit of a nasty pain in my stomach. In fact, I, uh, I don't feel well at all. I, I'd like you to ring my wife, please. If she's not at home, she'll be either at the Dawson's or with some friends. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. Awfully sorry. I, I've tried all the places you said, but no one's seen her today. Huh? Uh, this Mrs. Um, uh, Mrs. Bascom said she talked to your wife this morning. They were supposed to play golf together. Apparently, Mrs. Holmes just didn't turn up. Mm -hmm. That's strange. Yes, sir. Very strange. Not like it was at all. Uh, would you try my home phone? Oh, yes, sir. That's the first place I tried. No one answered. How does your tummy feel now? <sighs> Seems to be getting worse, if anything. Oh. Must have been something I had at lunch. Well, you shouldn't go home if there's no one there. Uh, here. <sighs> That's the number of the woman who does for us. It's... Thursday today, the day off. Uh, look, call her and explain the situation. Yes, uh, tell her to take a taxi out to the house and say, I'll be there within the hour. Would you like me to drive you home, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> That's very nice of you. I hate to inconvenience you, though. Oh, it's no trouble, sir. I'll get you a hat and coat, shall I? You won't need your briefcase, will you? Or, or is there something... Uh, yes. No, 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 quite. Yes, of course. Three pieces no, tea with caviar, right? Yes. Ooh. No, I suppose not. Is this... Oh, thank you. This guy is... Uh... <sighs> I went about the last of the hospitals. In fact, it is the last of them. 20 miles, anyhow. Well, could she have gone on a trip, do you suppose? Oh, no, no. She'd have told me. Anyway, that poor girl there. that's with him. Maybe you should call the She police. doesn't know. Mum had to do that about Dad once. 
They found him three months later, sitting in the park in Manchester, feeding the pigeons. Well, if I don't hear anything within the hour, I will call them. Uh, yes, I, uh, I'd better do that. Now, where's well, Mrs. Ruddy Watson? You, you phoned her. She promised to be here. I, look, I, I don't want to keep this. I've told you before, Sergeant Wilkins, and I'll tell you again. People do not simply disappear. She's got to be somewhere. Oh, we've checked and rechecked everywhere. She could have left the town, Inspector. And she didn't leave. She's still here somewhere. Yeah. Oh, perhaps we'd better let the newspapers have a crack at it. You know that's out. Her father's a very big man. The editors of some of the biggest national papers are like Siamese twins to him, let alone the locals. He doesn't want anything in the paper about it. He says she might have just gone away for a while and doesn't want to be embarrassed. Mm. You know... That husband knows more than he's saying. Maybe he killed her. Well, that wouldn't surprise me one bit. And what did he do with the body? Well, maybe he buried her. Maybe he dissolved her in acid and washed her down the drain. I don't know what he did with her. We've been through and over every darned inch of the ground on the property. If just supposing he did bump her off, Sergeant, where the heck did he bury her? Uh, well, anyway, Holmes can account almost for every second from the time Mrs. Bascom talked to his wife on the phone until the time he found in the missing persons report. His alibis too darn good. A jury doesn't convict people for having good alibis. And suddenly a whole new world opened up before Robert Holmes. Exciting possibilities. There were no boundaries, it seemed to him now. The world was his oyster. He decided that it was a holiday he was needing. A long, long holiday. Of course, he'd keep the house. He would refrain from letting it or anything stupid like that. You can't let the ruddy thing. Not with what the room under the garage contained. Not with what's downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Although, of course, who could ever find it? But then no one could ever find it. They might just get into conversation with the barman. Might just happen to talk with old Dutch in the bar. Oh, that's a bit dodgy. Certainly would. Imagine it. Oh, so you read the number 134 on the hill. Used to wait eight, three years ago. Before the present owner, of course. Rich geese has it now. His wife disappeared in mysterious circumstances. It's never been found. Some people reckon he had something to do with it. But they never managed to make anything of it. Yes, well, underneath the garage floor, there's this cellar place. All you do, as I remember, is to find a certain place on the wall. Oh, no. Definitely not Robert Holmes. Certainly not. Look the whole place up. Put it in the hands of reliable lawyers. And I'll take it. I'll hold up a return from time to time, of course. Of course. Otherwise. Otherwise, uh, people might think I've run away. Ah, south of France, I think. Then, uh, Switzerland. Ah. You must have a lot of money to be able to to travel like this, right? Oh, it's only been nine days. All the beautiful ladies in the world are waiting for you, Bob Holmes. Forty? Forty? What sort of an age is forty anyway to a man with money? Oh, hello. Uh, uh, Inspector Jason, please. Hmm. Yes, I, I think he is expecting me to ring. Thank you. Uh, hello? Uh, Inspector? Uh, Robert Holmes here? Yes, yes. Uh, no, 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 I... Uh, look, Inspector, I, I, I've i got to get away just, just for a while. It, it's been a terrible strain on me, as you can imagine. Hmm? Uh, France? Oh, yeah, yes, of course. And if she turns up, as I, I, I'm sure she must, the silly girl. Now, if you can contact me... No, no, I, I'm sorry, Inspector. I, I will not allow such a terrible possibility to prey on my mind. Now, I, I'm sure she merely decided on the spur of the moment to... Hmm? Oh, thank you. That's nice of you. But it, it's perfectly all right, then. I mean, I thought I'd just check. Good. Good, fine. Uh, well, as soon as I've got an address, I'll... Yeah. Right? Right, Julia, thank you for all your help. Yeah, he didn't sound at all no suspicious, did he? It was Robert Holmes' 40th birthday. 
He had allowed the woman who did for him leave for an indefinite period. On a generous retainer, of course. A woman who did for him? He began to pack. That sounds creepy. Then he discovered an annoying thing. Or he couldn't find the diamond-studded tie clip that Ella Wiles weird. had given him for his 39th birthday. He tried to remember when he had last worn it. It had been the day he had killed Ella Wiles. He remembered dressing and waiting for her to make a phone call. Later, he had carried her down to the room. He had placed her in the grave and covered her. It's got to be down there. It's the only place it can be. Oh, I can't leave it. Cost at least a thousand pounds. Diamonds are huge. Anyway, anyone ever found the room and found her and the tie clip of her too. No, I, there's no risk anyway. I'm alone. And so accordingly, he got a torch, opened the trap, and started down the stairs. He was halfway down when he heard the car approach. Who oh, the blazes? The coppers must be. With his ear to the trapdoor above him, Robert realized that the car and whoever had driven it there had come into the garage. It had to be the police. All right, be here. Who's that? It's not the police. Several minutes passed. Then came another voice. No, he seems to be home. The back door's open. But no one came when I rang. Might be in the bar. She said deliver it this morning. I'm positive of that. It's his birthday. What shall we do? <laughs> Suddenly, Robert recognized the second voice. Ed Mathis. Mathis? We'll leave the car where it is. It's uh, paid for. We'll go back to town in your car. Waiting a decent interval, Robert searched for the tie clip and found it. Now he was ready to go. South of France, blue waters and film starlets with loose morals awaited him. Swimming, Fishing, sailing, golf. <coughs> the door remained shut. He placed his back against the trap. He strained against it with all the power of his back and legs. And then he felt a wave of terror. Like a page slowly unfolding before him, he saw it. Ed Mathis. <coughs> The secret meeting with Eloise. Mathis was a car salesman at the place where he had admired the beautiful car that day. His birthday. Forty. And standing there like a poised missile just inches above him, the yellow, beautiful sports car. With one wheel resting firmly on the trap door. Oh, wow. Karma, man. <laughs> he got what he deserved, didn't he? And all the while, his wife had bought him something for his birthday. And he was losing his mind. Using his marbles. Oh boy. Darling, let's go out and paint the town red. But what about your headache? Oh, that's gone. Grandpa Headache Powders did the trick. Grandpa Headache Powders kill pain, soothe strained nerves, and lift depression. Grandpa Headache Powders are extra effective because they have a triple action. Grandpa Headache Powders work extra fast because they dissolve almost immediately. Get fast, effective relief from any pain, all pain. Get Grandpa Headache Powders. Ah, Grandpa. Soak, soak. That's all you have to do. Soak, soak. Just for an hour or two, you buy. Take soak and powders new when you use new biotech. With amazing new biotechs, the stubbornest stains will vanish. Yes, vanish clean away. 
just by soaking your laundry overnight in cold water, or for an hour or two in warm water, or by pre-washing it quickly in your washing machine. Get amazing new Biotechs today. Beyond Midnight is presented every Friday night at half past nine by Biotechs, the new soak and pre-wash powder. The program is adapted for broadcasting and produced by Michael McCabe. There's not much point in inventing ghost stories. Anyone can do it. It's rather like playing a game whose rules one has made up without telling one else what they are. The event I'm going to report took place in a glorious blaze in the most marvellous summer in living memory. England. The summer of 1921. Good it was that summer to be alive. But to be young was very heaven. I was as old as the century. Twenty-one. Biotex, the new soak and pre-wash powder presents Beyond Midnight by Michael McKay. Just soak. The episode Just called soak in Dear Biotech. Ghost. Just soak. Just soak in Biotech. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. If you have wondered how to get your washing really stain-free, understand this. Biotex removes the stains and dirt washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Stains, grass stains, tiresome collar and cup stains, ingrained dirt, soil and grime. Out they all come and you don't stare a finger. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Biotex with natural enzymes is the pre-wash powder with the most enzymes to give you extra pre-wash power. Absolutely no rubbing, no color loss, no fabric wear. Use it for cotton, silks, woolen, synthetics. Use it to make new again. Soaking in Biotex removes the stains and dirt, but washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. without telling one else what they are. OBS had the event started I report took place in a glorious blaze in the most marvellous summer in living memory. This is Dear England, Ghost from Beyond the Summer of 1921. Good it was that summer to be alive, but to be young was very heaven. I was as old as the century, 21. Biotex, the new soak and pre-wash powder presents Beyond Midnight by Michael McKay. Just soak, just soak in Biotex. Just soak, just soak in Biotex. Just soak, just soak in Biotex. Biotex. If you have wondered how to get your washing really stain-free, understand this. Biotex removes the stains and dirt washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Stains, grass stains, tiresome collar and cup stains, ingrained dirt, soil and grime. Out they all come and you don't stare a finger. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Biotex with natural enzymes is the pre-wash powder with the most enzymes to give you extra pre-wash power. Absolutely no rubbing, no color loss, no fabric wear. Use it for cotton, silks, woolen, synthetics. Use it to make new again. Soaking in Biotex removes the stains and dirt, but washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. There are plenty of people still alive who will recall the endless procession of golden days. 1921. It's unclouded dawn. It's magnificent noon of blue and gold. It's days, sinking into warm, noble evenings, full of the promise of another day of the kind of summer one dreams about, but seldom gets. 
I was living at this time with my parents in Taunton. And they, knowing my ways, were not at all put out when I went off, saying I would write when I found out where I was going. I had never been to Crowe Stratford. I read its name and decided. I made up my own fantasy of characters. I was the only passenger to alight four o'clock in the afternoon. The whole earth drowsed pleasantly in the heat. Crown Stratford! Crown Stratford! The station master wore a cap of gold and braid, but it appeared he was doing duty as porter as well. It was good to be 21 at Crown Stratford in the sun that summer. Crown Stratford! Afternoon, sir. Ticket, please. Good afternoon. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to stay here for a while. Have you any suggestions where I might put up? Put up? Well, uh, there's the Bell Inn. That's if you don't mind a bit of jollification on market days and Saturday nights. Oh. Well, you see, my stay is going to be quite a long one. I think I would prefer private accommodation. Mm. You go out of the station there... You go over the bridge, you'll see four houses in a row. They're called Sevastopol Terrace. Now, you call at number two and ask for Mrs. Wayne. Tell her I sent you, Mr. Jolbury. I think you'll find she'll fix you up. Sevastopol Terrace consisted of four red brick cottages without elegance of any sort. They could not have been more ordinary if the architect had entered a competition for the most ordinary, the most mediocre dwellings. Please come in. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, it's a beautiful day. A dead front room, seldom used. Uneasy chairs. A small piano with a fretwork front panel. The front room fire grate was stuffed with orange tissue paper. Above the mantelpiece, there was the enlarged photograph of a man in khaki. He was dark with a full moustache and an expression of slight astonishment on his face. I made a satisfactory deal with Mrs. Wayne. The other lady was Mrs. Jennison, a 50-ish, stout, and, as it was called then, a kindly, infectious laugh. I knew I was going to be comfortable. Six weeks or so I decided upon. Time in which to write a novel. Oh, yes. That is what I had set my heart on doing. The blue, cloudless days went by. And I wrote not a word of the novel. Mm -hmm. I liked my ladies. Sounds like we me. We took our meals together and the household was an easy one to dwell in. And then, a strange uneasiness began to make itself manifest in my mind. For no reason at all, it seemed, I began to be afraid of something. Afraid in a way that I'd never experienced before, or for that matter, since this time. Hmm. As Dr. Johnson said, if you think well of what you wrote at night, tear it up in the morning. I see. Quiet. Only the ladies. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Oh, come on, Fielden. What's the matter with you? What is there to be afraid of, man? So quiet. But there was no doubt about it. For some strange, strange reason, I was afraid to stay in that house in Sebastopol Terrace alone. <laughs> Wayne, 
are you are you going out? Yes, we're just going for a walk, Mr. Field, and we won't be long. Yes, we won't be long, Mr. Field. We're just a little walk, which will be back to see. Bye bye. I became certain that I was being followed by something down the stairs whenever I'd been up to my room. It was worse somehow when they were out of the house. All right, somehow, when they're here, but... So quiet. Something... that Mrs. Wayne was a widow, and I knew that that exceptionally plain soldier in the picture was her deceased husband. One Sunday, after the ceremonial tea, Mrs. Wayne had used him as a time bag, as people do. She was putting the tea things together to take them out into the kitchen, and was at that moment holding what I privately thought to be a very ugly teapot. Mrs. Jennison regarded the teapot. She nodded at it. I always liked that teapot. Do you believe in premonitions? No, I can't say that I do. Or at any rate, I've never had one that was worth having. Do you believe in premonitions, Mrs. Wayne? Oh. Tell me about it, Mrs. Wayne. I'd rather not. It's a painful subject. She often thinks about that on Sundays. Two years ago on a Sunday, she had a premonition of something awful all day. Her husband, who went into business when he came out of the army, used to get up first and go off to work. That Monday morning when Mrs. Wayne came down, she found him in the kitchen. He'd hanged himself there. <laughs> be an inquest, of course, but nothing definite ever came out of it. He had troubles, money or drink or something like that. Well, there had to be a reason. There had to be. Tell me about it. Tell me what it was. Well, if you ask me, it's only my opinion, of course. I'm asking you. Excuse me, I must go and help Mrs. W with the washing. The reason? To tell me the reason. I reckon that, like a lot of other men, couldn't settle down to ordinary life when he came out of the army. It wasn't the same anymore. Whatever makes you like life had gone out of it. He never liked being a soldier, but when he got back home, he didn't like that either. Some fellows manage better than he did, but it, he couldn't. He used to brood a lot. You could hardly get a word out of him sometimes. I stared at the photograph of Sidney Wayne, and then at Mrs. Jennison. Do you mean he killed himself because he was bored? Well, I would say bored, no. Say lost. There was a lot like that when they came back. Killed him in action, you might say. I moved close to the photograph and stared at the dead face in it. He stared with the same cold intensity, not at me, but past me. It was horrible. The stillness of the face, those eyes fixed on some object of vision beyond me or my glance. His hair was close cropped beneath his hat with its badge of the Suffolk Regiment. The peak of the cap came down almost to the bridge of his nose, hiding his forehead. Nothing fitted with either his body, his temperament, or his final act. Now that I knew what that act had been, he was dressed for me in the horror of the grotesque. 
My eyes moved involuntarily to his neck. And I turned away alike from the photograph and the dreadful images which I violently extruded from my mind. Now, how shall we spend the evening? Is anyone to church? Or walk? Or shall we have a game of cards? <laughs> and paint the town red. But what about your headache? Oh, that's gone. Grandpa Headache Powders did the trick. Grandpa Headache Powders kill pain, soothe pain, nerves, and lift depression. Grandpa Headache Powders are extra effective because they have a triple action. Grandpa Headache Powders work extra fast because they dissolve almost immediately. Get fast, effective relief from any pain, all pain. Get Grandpa Headache Powders. Ah, Grandpa... Just soak. Just soak. That sounded so naughty, didn't it? Stains, grass stains, collar and cuff stains, ingrain dirt, soil and grime. Out they come and you don't stir a finger. Just Just soak. Just Just soak in Biotex. Biotex with natural enzymes is the pre-wash powder with the most enzymes to give you extra pre-wash power. Absolutely no rubbing, no color loss, no fabric wear. Soaking in Biotex removes the stains and dirt that washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Well, what do you think? A walk, you fancy? Would that be nice, Mr. Fielder? Oh, dear, look at that Sydney's picture. Well, well. Oh, you to go one of these days. Get me a dustpan and brush, will you? I'll soon clear this mess. All right. Oh, I'm sorry that happened. Now you'll have to have it framed. Oh, frames broken, too. I shan't do that. I never really liked that photograph. I only put it up there to please Sydney. I like to remember him the way he was before he went into the army. I shall just put it away somewhere. And then I knew that we were not three in that house, but four. Not three, but four, huh? Ooh. The situation had taken a new turn. I did not know what to expect. I decided that that day, after the falling of the picture, was a day to be spent by the sea. So accordingly, I went to Lowestoft. I soon settled with a newspaper on the promenade in a deck chair. There was an empty chair beside me. It was not empty long, though. A middle-aged woman sat beside me. After only a few minutes, she made occasion to talk to me. You're troubled about something, aren't you? Hmm? Yes. Yes, I am. Will you tell me what it is? Um, Yes. Yes, all right, I will. And as if it was the most natural thing in the world, I told her the whole story. From my arrival in the house in Sebastopol Terrace, right up until the falling of the picture. May I tell you what I think? Certainly, I, I'd like to hear. It's quite clear to me. I believe in spirits or ghosts or whatever name you like to give to that part of us that you now know exists when the body's fallen away. That, that poor spirit 
was driven to his terrible deed. I, by distress, it was very well to him. However silly you or anybody else may think it to have been. And uh, afterwards, in the clear vision death brings with it, he saw how wrong he had been, how cruel to that kind little woman. He's, he's trying to tell her that. And he can't leave the house till he has done it. He's in touch with you to be his messenger. You know that now. But you're refusing the message. Oh, you mustn't, my dear. You must take it and set the poor ghost free. Uh, I, I can't do that. I, I won't. Well, let his message, if there is one, be carried some other way. He told me that you don't dare stay in the house when the others have gone out for a walk or... Well, that's right. Daren't is the right word. That's, that's just the time when he's trying hardest to get his message to you. You must stay in the house and give him his chance. I doubt he'll leave you till you do. Maybe you're his only chance. Uh, how do you know this? Oh, you are well. Experience. And now I must go home to lunch. How strange I should come to you this morning. And then he was gone, walking against the sun, so that I could hardly see her departure. Interior. The place shone quietly with care. There was not even a sound from the outside world. The shadows in the room moved solemnly with the sun, and the light imperceptibly faded. The window was open a little at the top, and occasionally the curtain stirred in a passing soundless breeze. My eyes felt heavy, and my limbs agreeably warm. I felt, for the first time, completely free of fear. Slowly, I moved into that half-slumber that one gets in church at sermon time. One hears the sound of the voice, and sometimes the words. But the whole... The impressions are jumbled. And then... Something happened. Something happened that turned me into a thing of terror. I uttered a sound like a man in a nightmare. I struggled to shout at the dark terror that flapped in my mind. I thought I saw something, a limp form unnaturally hanging in the room in front of me. Oh. Been doing your correspondence. What a good man. Now, off you go while I make supper. Hmm. Uh, 
I'll just get everything sorted out, and then I can see with it and get the chance tomorrow. I'm quite hungry. isn't an officer of the Royal Flying Corps. He's wearing the uniform of an army chaplain. <laughs> then we all knew you would see at once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mrs. Tennyson, you're a giddy limit. You really are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> uh, are you all right, dear? Quite all right. Why shouldn't I be? Well, I thought maybe you had one of your headaches. Some may be. No. Yeah. No, I'm all right. It's tired, perhaps. I think I'll go to bed shortly after supper. You do that. We'll wash up, won't we? Hmm? Oh, rather. She had lost her air of commonplace acceptance of life. She looked like... What could it be? Like someone who had mislaid a possession was trying to remember where it might be. She wasn't going to bed because she had a headache. She was going because she wanted to be alone, to think about whatever it was that preoccupied her. When the meal was over, she rose. Well, if you don't mind, excuse me. Not at all. Where you go, have a good rest. And so, Mrs. Wayne went up to bed. Next morning, I was having breakfast when I heard the postman knock at the door. her to return to the kitchen where I sat at breakfast. I was reading the paper which I'd propped up against the teapot. Mrs. Wayne didn't come back. I thought she was being a long time out in the lobby. There was no sound at all. Then, just when I was going out to see if anything was the matter, she came in. Slowly. Her face with its snub nose and sandy hair was as pale as death. It had a terrible dignity of sadness, a piercing accusation like an angel with a sword, and a dreadful quietness. She held out to me a letter. The envelope and notepaper were mine. It was addressed to someone called Meg. How did you know? He called me Monk. I did not need to ask any questions. She had found this letter among my mail on a little table, and she gave the rest to the postman. I didn't know. Well, I never told you. Read the letter. Uh, I don't want to. Max, dear, forgive me. Forgive me. That's not my writing. It is. But you wrote it. I found it with your letters. He came to you last night, didn't he? I don't know. I don't know. I knew. As soon as I came in, the house was empty. He stayed with me until you came. He was here. I knew he was always here. I didn't think anyone else could ever know. But you knew. He came to you. And now he's gone. Forever. You must stay in the house and give him his chance. 
I got the feeling he would tell you to. Maybe you are his only chance. Max, dear. Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> wondered how to get your washing really stain-free, understand this. Biotex removes the stains and dirt washing won't. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Stains, grass stains, tiresome collar and cup stains, ingrain dirt, soil and grime. Out they all come and you don't stir a finger. Just soak. Just soak in Biotex. Biotex with natural enzymes is the pre-wash powder with the most enzymes to give you extra pre-wash power. Absolutely no rubbing, no color loss, no fabric wear. Okay, everybody, I have to apologize once again. Um, unfortunately, my system is starting to lock up here. So we're going to reboot and the radio shows will continue in... Give me about 10 to 15 minutes. I apologize. It takes a long time for this system to restart, and unfortunately. Alrighty, we'll be right back as soon as we can. Stay tuned. we got some more creepy stuff and some more entertaining and then some more fun stories coming up. <laughs> 